Hi everyone, Bree here from Etched Actuarial and in today's video I'm talking all about the differences between CAS and the SOA. So if you don't already know what those two acronyms stand for, well CAS is the Casualty Actuarial Society and the SOA is the Society of Actuaries. But before we get into this video, just a reminder that if you haven't already signed up for my exam P and FM tips, if you're writing one of those exams soon, well, go sign up right now, pause the video, I will leave a link in the description below where you can go do that. I talk about tons of different things like how to pass your actuarial exams, I give you tips on the best calculators to get, and just all sorts of different tips that you will find helpful for your exams. Anyway, let's get into this video. Okay, so like I said, the Casualty Actuarial Society and the Society of Actuaries are two different actuarial societies that you can become a member of if you are working as an actuary in the US or in Canada. So the main difference between these two actuarial societies is that they cater to different types of actuaries. So the Society of Actuaries caters to actuaries that are working in things like life insurance, health insurance, and pensions and retirements and things like that. Whereas the Casualty Actuarial Society, CAS, is catering to actuaries that are working in things like property insurance, auto insurance, uh, liability and business insurance and those kind of things, casualty types of insurance and casualty and property types of insurance. But the main thing that both of these different societies do, even though they're catering to different types of actuaries, is that they regulate the exam process, they regulate different things like how actuaries should act and ethics of being an actuary and everything like that. They create standards for how we as actuaries should behave and act and work in the actuarial world. But there are a few differences other than that that might impact you more closely. So what I'm going to talk about now is what those differences are and then I'll talk about how you should decide which society to go with and when you should make that decision. So first let's start with some of the differences between the two other than the types of work that you'd be doing. Obviously that is a difference between them. If you're working on the Casualty Actuarial Society side, then you'll be doing things like auto insurance, property insurance. Typically those tend to be much shorter length of liabilities or insurance, whereas on the life insurance side you'll be dealing with much longer things, like life insurance can actually last for 30-40 years. So you'll be dealing with much longer types of insurance products generally. There are also shorter things that a SOA actuary might deal with, like health insurance tends to be one year long if you're just doing group benefits or something like that, for example. But anyway, that's obviously a difference. Another difference is the examination process, and this will be a big one for you. So on the Society of Actuaries side, you'll be doing different exams than they'll be doing on the Casualty Actuarial Society. Now the first three exams are the same for both. So exam P, FM and IFM are the same for both both societies but once you hit that fourth exam that's when you have to choose. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later but it's important to know that on the Casualty Actuarial Society side there is really only one track of exams you can do. Every single person does the same exams whereas on the so society gosh I can't speak on the Society of Actuaries side, the SOA side, there's actually different tracks and those are just like specializations. So you could specialize in something like life and annuities or you could specialize in group insurance or retirement benefits or corporate finance, anything like that. Actually, I will link to a post below where you can find out all the different details about the different tracks, all the differences between these two societies and everything like that. That'll be a really helpful resource for you. But yeah, go check that out if you want to know more about the specific tracks that you can join as a part of the SOA. But anyway, the thing is that with the SOA, you won't necessarily be writing the same exams as all your coworkers. You will be specializing likely in something different than other people around you. So in a sense that can make things a bit harder, but it also makes it interesting for you because you actually get to decide on the specific things that you want to specialize in, which is pretty cool. Now when you specialize, that doesn't necessarily cut you off from 
certain jobs or anything, you can still pretty much work in any actuarial job, but you'll likely be more qualified for specific jobs that are more related to the specialization that you took in your exams. Okay, now another difference between the two societies is the salary. I looked at the DW, the DW actuarial salary survey, and according to that, Casualty Actuarial Society members tend to make a bit more than Society of Actuaries members. I'm not exactly sure why that is. It could just be that the types of companies that hire CAS actuaries tend to be in higher cost of living areas, or maybe there's a bit higher demand for CAS actuaries. I'm not sure. But the salaries aren't hugely different, and I wouldn't make this a deciding factor in your decision to go either route. Yeah, so those are the main differences between the two. So now let's talk a bit about when you will decide which which route you want to go. So one thing I didn't mention before is that exam P, FM, and IFM, the first three actuarial exams, uh, qualify you for both tracks. So no matter whether you want to go the CAS route or the Society of Actuaries route, you're going to have to write those three exams either way. It's only on your fourth exam where you'll have to decide which way you want to go. Now, it's going to be hard for some people that want to try to get ahead in their exams, even though they haven't found a job yet, you're going to have to make that decision of whether you want to go the casualty actuarial route or the society of actuaries route before you've even found your first job. That's going to be a big decision. What most people do and how I recommend you decide on which path to take is just see where you end up in your job. If you end up getting a life insurance job, that's probably the way you're going to go, the SOA route. If you end up getting your first job in property insurance, then you're probably going to go the CAS route. That's how most people decide and it seems to make a lot of sense. You could decide before, but just be prepared for the fact that you might have to take an exam on the other side if you don't get a job in the specific uh, route that you've decided to go. Hopefully that made sense. Anyway. Those are the differences and a bit of the similarities between the Casualty Actuarial Society and the Society of Actuaries. Hope it helps. I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for those exam P and FM study tips if you're writing soon. See you. Bye.